welcome back to The Lincoln Project. I'm your host, Reid Galen. Today, I'm joined by George Conway, fellow co-founder of The Lincoln Project and member of the Society for the Rule of Law. George is a longtime attorney and longtime pro-democracy activist. George, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time since we've had a chance to sort of sit down and, and talk. Yeah. We see each other. Probably 91 counts ago. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Something like that. Right. But who's counting? And well, well, he is. I guarantee you that. Um, but you know, I had a question for you, which is um, in the context. I don't want to get into polling numbers and all that. But yeah. what I do want to do is get into the idea of Trump. Is I think he's got the Iowa caucus is January fifteenth, and I think he has another trial and or hearing. I think that starts the next day. Yeah, I think I, I, I've lost track. I think at some point the. E. Jean Carroll damages trial right. is going to happen. And then he's got um, another fraud case. I another think. fraud case, I think, involving um, uh, this Ponzi scheme he right. helped carry out as part of The Apprentice. The right. Apprentice had a sponsor called ACN, and basically it was what they call a multi marketing, multi level marketing um, scam. And basically, you send money in to them to join. And then the way you make money back is getting by getting other people to join. And it's like a chain letter. And sooner or later, so, somebody gets left holding the bag. So it's the literal definition of a pyramid scheme. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's a Ponzi scheme. Absolutely. And that's apparently the evidence. I, I, I understand it to be pretty good against him. Um, the plaintiffs, it's a class action, I think, or, or at least a bunch of plaintiffs. Right. Uh, they dropped the claims against the kids because the kids were really didn't know that much but trump right. was neck deep in it yeah and that that'll be interesting too because it just you know everything everything about this man just about is a fraud and it, it just it never stops i mean this is trump water trump wine trump mm -hmm. steaks yeah. trump you yeah. all of it i yeah. mean it's just one grift after another. absolutely and even after all that it turns out you know he's he's skittering around to move 40 million dollars from one bank account yeah. to another yeah. and of course the regulators see all this so yeah is I mean I don't often give him much credit for being classically intelligent. No, he's not. But he certainly is manipulative and scheming. I feel like sometimes if God doesn't, if you're not going to be intelligent, God gives you this. Sort yeah, of I mean that, that's sort of an gene. interesting debate that you can have about Trump. Is I mean he's a sociopath, and yeah. one of the characteristics, typical characteristics of a sociopath, is impulsiveness mm -hmm. and an inability to plan and you know he that's trump yeah but he does have something of what i call a reptilian instinct <laughs> right to just change the subject to get under people's skin and to grift as yeah. you say but it you know his thinking isn't very deep he, he's not really capable of that if it involves one, more than one or two steps of actual analysis right. and and doing going beyond his little you know the pl playbook his brain was born with right um he can't do it and which is a bad thing for a president of the United States and i and i think it's important and i want to get back to the legal piece of this but i think it's important there to understand that while he may only have a couple of pages in the playbook the people around him have books and books right. of stuff and, and, that they and want their, to do. And their, their, their challenge is to control him. He can be manipulated very mm. easily because of his, he's not very smart, and because of his narcissistic ego. Yeah, right. Um, you can manipulate him by convincing him. You know, we, I remember once it, it, we had a client, we, we, we do that too, but um, you, you convince him that it was his idea or mm. you couple the idea with this will just show off your brilliance right um you know it's like how they got the remember how they got trump to talk about the wall mm -hmm. back in 2015 and 2016 they wanted him to talk about immigration yeah. but he had no interest in immigration right. he had no he has no you know real interest in any issue unless he can manipulate it to his benefit right. but the way they got him to talk about immigration was they say was the wall tell him you tell them you will build a wall and he said yes i'm brilliant i am the big builder i'm going to build right. a wall from from you know the pacific coast to to the gulf of mexico right and there thereby that was the basis for the wall even right. though you know it was financially economically practically ridiculous right so that you know basically you can manipulate him but you can't control him and that is 
you know, in, in the management of Trump, I guess the, he, she, he's got two new managers. Uh, what? Yeah, uh, Susie, uh, Susie Wiles, Wiles and, and Chris Lasavita. And Chris Lasavita. It's like you have to accept the fact that you can't control him. Um, you can only kind of nudge him and manipulate him by sweet talking him. And so, um, and and you're gonna you're gonna you know you're not gonna win all the battles. So, but but hey, you know if you're if you're if you if you're taking the money, you don't care. Right. You know, um, I, that's what this is all about. I mean, that's right. all about for the people around him. I mean, yeah. It's not they don't actually believe that Donald Trump knows what he's doing or is good for the country. But right. it's like it's about power and about about, you know, making money off this multi, you know, this very, very large financial operation, which is designed to take money from people who, who shouldn't be who really can't afford to give it. And you know, putting it, putting it into the machine, and 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 using it to control people and manipulate people and fly around the country, and and for one's legal fees and to pay off others' legal fees. So you know, I was on the plane coming to Washington yesterday. It's interesting you bring up the the sort of cash register piece yeah. of this. And I was sitting next to a woman, and and um, we started talking. And it turns out she works in public policy. I won't describe the the industry, but I said, "Do you understand?" That this your particular industry is the kind that if this guy gets reelected, like kiss it goodbye. Mm -hmm. Now you can save it, but just know that you will must be prepared to pay whatever it is they ask. But the the you know I, I think one thing you've seen, George, and listen, you were up for a significant position in the Justice Department. I was. So you've seen him up as up close as anybody is. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I met him a few times. But I watched him very closely, right. and I, heard, you know, I obviously heard descriptions of his behavior and so on and so forth. But again, even if it's not Trump necessarily, the people around him again will will be, uh, you know, extractive to the nth degree. Yes, right. I mean, that's that's how the operation proceeds. I mean, that yeah. is exactly that's the engine that keeps this going. And it's and it's interesting because I just uh, wrote a foreword. Mm -hmm. to a book written by an old nemesis of mine who used to attack me on the pages of the New York Observer in the late 90s when I was helping out Paula Jones and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, a guy named Joe Connison, okay. longtime journalist. And, you know, we have, we couldn't, we, we have completely different perspectives on politics in the past, you know, right. and, and on public policy, and we would again in the normal times. But he's written a book that describes the last basically 70 years of conservatism and points out how much grifting there was. And he traces it all the way back to Joe McCarthy and, and, and Roy Cohn mm -hmm. and how that was, you know, that was a, a scam designed yeah. to convince, convince people that there are communists in the State Department and then Cohn and his boyfriend would fly around to various embassies and, and sleep in and keep torture these 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 poor yeah. diplomats and you know it was a scam and yeah. and people and then you have the, the telemarketers and the, not telemarketers but the direct mail yeah, sure. and how basically you know these people were making most of the money the candidates and the issues were getting very little and it became this is the engine and trump it's perfect for trump that's how it's one of the ways that, that trump trump understood that politics politics could be used for grift and and he figured that out early on and he and and that's part of what he and everyone all these people were doing when they conducted the you know their their fake election scheme yeah. i mean that was that was in part because it's like hey we people are going to send us money and yeah. and they you know they sent him a quarter billion dollars for what well i want to ask two questions one is um and i had a conversation with my dad about this yeah. after after trump got elected yeah um, you know, my dad started working in the GOP Oh, I used to see his new newsletter yeah. every you know. So he was he started working in the late seventies. Yeah. Right. And for him, you know, I don't you know, there was there was a time, as you know, George, where you could be a Republican, you could be a conservative, and you could be a conservative Republican. Right. Right. We were just Republicans. Right. You know, you know I, he was an operative, I was an operative's right. kid. Um, but there were, you know, conservatives, earnest conservatives. Looking back mm -hmm. now. What did, you know, as, as Stuart Stevens called it, it, do you believe it was all a lie? In large part, I think it was because when you, when you look back at the things that conservatives talked about, some of the things, like balancing the budget mm. and, and, and reducing domestic spending, it never really happened. 
Right. I, I mean, it happened a little during the Reagan administration. One percent for one year. Right. And 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 after that, you know, I mean, and and who the the person who had the worst record on debt ever was Donald Trump. I mean, yeah. he he increased the debt in four years um, by a, I think some multiple, yeah. maybe one and a half or two times. I don't know than Obama did in eight years. Right. And. You know, it, it's it's a the, the the Republican Congress, the members of Congress, they don't get serious about cutting the budget until a Democrat's in office, right? Um, and and but and neither party, and, and this I'm going to both sides of this a little. <laughs> neither party actually can deal with entitlement spending, right? And that's that's actually the fundamental driver of of of, of government spending, and and the reason why you know the Democrats will demagogue any chance any attempt to you know, in any attempt to control that spending, even though you can look, do the math actuarially and say, well, this isn't going to work out in the long run. You just keep kicking the can down the road. And if the Republicans ever, if a responsible Republican ever um, can't uh, ever propose something, they, you know, they paint them as heartless, heartless ogres. And so the Republicans just engage in demagoguery instead, right. just saying that, you know, they, they just paint this image that it's all going to um, government bureaucrats who are doing nothing. And, you know, right. I mean, I'm not saying the government's all that efficient or good, but there's, there's a limit to how much you can get out of the government. But the fact of the matter is, it's not that spending that, you know, that that chews up a good chunk of the economy. Well, I mean, I don't want to get off on a, yeah, a I know, budgetary I know. and or economic discussion. But the truth is, too, though, is that the spending is just one side of the ledger. Correct. <laughs> right. right. Which is there's also a revenue side, right. which hasn't changed significantly right, right. in decades right and right. and and part of that you know i mean it goes back to the the old idea that um you promote growth by cutting taxes which you do but you don't you know you don't get it all back right right i mean it's a long-term proposition and you have to accept that fact and you have to cut the spending i think it's better to have the spending in the private sector generally speaking sure but anyway we're we're, we're doing it. um so it was all it, there. Was, there were a lot of lies involved. Yeah, no, I think uh, in just a reference to. I, I just when, think that one I think of the most. I mean, um, there are others. Well, I, you know, I mean, th you know, oh, the whole immigration thing. I mean, you know, it's like yes, we we do have a problem controlling our borders. Absolutely, we do. I don't think anybody could deny that. But what solutions did you did you really? What practical, real solutions did did Donald Trump come up with? He didn't want solutions. You have to compromise and get a solution, but he didn't want it. He, the, the Republicans want the issue more than they actually want to fix right. the problem because you can't build a wall. It's not physically possible. Well, that's that's where I think to just stay philosophical for yeah. a second, where the Republican Party slash conservatives almost became libertarian. Yeah. Which is liber from my perspective, libertarianism is not a governing ethos. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like it sounds good, but like when you're raging at stop signs, yeah. Right. And screaming about helmet laws, like yeah. that's you know and vaccines. I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things where it it you can't govern like that. That's right. not that's not a realistic way to right. do it. Well they're not interested in governing now. Right. And that that's sort of like to go back to Joe's book, um I see that's I see that that has now become so endemic the grift that that's what drives members of Congress right. in, in the House. I mean, you basically you go on TV, Newsmax, Fox News, wherever, and you or you tweet it out or whatever, yeah. and you say something outrageous, and then you say, "Please send me money." Yeah, and and they live off of that stuff. I mean, that's what that's what that's the Gates formula, the MTG formula, the Bobert formula. It's all, and frankly, they're all like that because at the end of the day, they're terrified of somebody else raising the money instead of them. Yeah. Well, I know that in the fall of twenty, um, whatever the um, whatever the Act Blue version is for Republicans, mm -hmm. remember they win were, red, win red. Thank you. They were charging people's credit cards monthly, right. monthly, monthly, well past. Yeah, and the, then they the, were also they were also they had the pre-checking the pre-populating right. the boxes that say to make this a recurring donation. Right. So some people didn't even know, right? So until they see it on their bank statement if they look at their bank statement. But we, who looks at their bank statement now with you know with debit cards and everything? Like but that. what it's happened was is that whatever the whatever the whatever the limit was was yeah. like twenty six hundred dollars. Yeah. All these people were flying over that. When Red's taking the money, depositing wherever, now they have to start refunding all this yeah. money. Right? Oh, you mean they were going over limits? Huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. They geez. were going over the limits. So now you've got in, t in the fall of 2020. That's think bad about staff this. work. Yeah. Kushner's stealing all the money from the campaign, and yeah. then the campaign has to give all this money back to donors that yeah. they that they took without telling them. So now basically the Trump campaign is broke. 
But again, remember that. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I know. But yeah. now they didn't think that they were That's A, going to lose anyway. And then ultimately, <laughs> Trump didn't want to leave. And yeah. so let's talk about that. So um, as we're recording this, um, Jack Smith, the federal prosecutor, uh, who's trying, who will try both Trump in Washington, D.C. for January 6th and in Florida on the document stuff. Um, Trump keeps saying that he has immunity. He has immunity. Right. He has immunity. So Jack Smith has gone straight to the Supreme yeah. Court yeah. I mean, to and, and ask yes. for adjudication on whether or not a former president can claim this immunity. Yeah, the, the legal term for Trump's argument is bullshit. <laughs> and I'll explain why. And I actually have, you know, even though I was a securities litigator defending class actions and under the federal securities laws, I, I do, do have a little experience in this area because I ghost wrote all the briefs in the Paula Jones case. Mm -hmm. And that was a case. Okay. So here, here's, here's what the, what the immunity landscape looks like in 1974 or five or maybe six. I don't know. There was a case called Nixon against Fitzgerald. And it was a, it was somebody suing Nixon about, I don't know whether it was something he did in Vietnam or something he did with the wiretaps or what in Watergate or mm -hmm. something. But basically they tried to sue former president Nixon to, uh, for damages mm -hmm. out of, for, for him to write a check out of his own pocket for something he did as president of the United States. Okay. And the Supreme court said, no, you can't do that because we can't have, we can't have the president, and this is part of article two um, of the constitution. We can't have presidents liable for everything they do. They potentially liable for everything that they do because what they do affects so many people. So if, mm -hmm. you know, if the president does something and it's kind of close to the line, he'll be, you know, hundred thousand people could sue him. And, yeah. or, or if he did cross the line, he'd be bankrupted and no, and what would happen was the presidents would be afraid to exercise, uh, engage in valid exercise of authority, lest they be personally liable for right. acting on behalf of the United States. So they created a standard that said <clears throat> that if the president is engaging in conduct that is within the outer perimeter, outer perimeter, those the magic words, of his official responsibility, he cannot be held liable mm -hmm. civilly. Okay. And in Paula Jones, the, the, the question was, well, they tried to use that to defer the lawsuit um, the Paula Jones lawsuit. And the answer was, well, none of this applies because what you did, Bill Clinton, was when you were governor of Arkansas, you weren't president. This isn't presidential. Right. And then the next case was, the, the, the two cases were, were um, but in particular, the one that was important was one brought, brought against the DA of, 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 of New York County mm -hmm. um, when Trump was trying to get out from the subpoenas uh, uh, relating to his fraudulent business right. practices and the supreme court said you know this doesn't this doesn't again this doesn't relate to his official responsibilities right so the question then becomes and again that was a civil case so yeah. the question becomes whether the president can be held liable there's a civil component and a criminal component. none of these cases deal with criminal mm. and that's the difference here i mean what he did on january 6th was not within the official the outer perimeter so that's why the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit held in a civil case involving, I guess, Capitol Police officers held right. that there was no, he, he, could, he could be held liable potentially right. depending on the, on the exact facts. This is criminal and, and, and there's never been, you know, the, the logic of Nixon against Fitzgerald doesn't apply in the criminal realm because it's just, you're, you're, you're saying that he violated the criminal law and it's not like 100,000 people can sue. I mean, right. it, this is actual, these are actual crimes committed by president, by president and there is no basis for an immunity the president is subject to the law just like everyone else, and there's no basis for a criminal immunity. And that's the point the Justice Department is making. That's the point that Judge Chutkin mm -hmm. um, strongly upheld in her district court decision. And what, what, what Smith is doing now is he's leapfrogging. He filed a petition for certiorari um, in the Court of Appeals, even though the Court of Appeals has yet to have briefing and argument, mm -hmm. so that he can accelerate this, get this done mm -hmm. before... Um, you know, before the March trial date and to preserve yeah. the March trial date. And I think he's got a pretty good chance. I mean, the Supreme Court immediately issued an order um, granting Smith's request for expedited briefing on the cert petition. Um, they probably, I think, even though their next conference is January 5th, I think they probably will decide to take the case, you know, in a week or two. Right. 
And what Smith has asked for in his papers, I read them last night, is for a briefing schedule that's basically would be finished in January. They could argue the case at the end of January or, or beginning of February. I don't know what their what their argument schedule is. And you could get a decision in February. It's right. not this isn't a hard case. Right. Uh, and also it's um, the other issue. There's a second issue involved. And he sure. they're, they're arguing that um, he because he was acquitted at the impeachment trial, he gets off criminally be, under the double doctrine against double jeopardy, <laughs> the provision against double jeopardy. In the, in but the of Bill course, of impeachment but is a political the, act. It's, it's right. It's not, he's not being, um, uh, it's not criminal jeopardy is, you know, where your life or freedom is, is at stake. So it doesn't really, doesn't really count. So those, both of those arguments are meritless. They're really were just designed to see if they can kick the, tr that, that's, that's his ultimate strategy. He wants these trials, every one of them, particularly the criminal trials. Right. He wants to delay them as much as possible. And he wants to delay the criminal trials till after the election and his, you know, he's running for president in large part because he wants to stay out of jail. Right. Which is just a remarkable thing to think when you think about it. It's, it, but it's classic Donald Trump. And his view was that he can, he could stop the prosecutions. And I think he's right. Yeah. Uh, if he begin, if he's sworn in as president. I don't think he'd ever leave. Yeah. I, well, I, I yeah, I, I agree. I don't think, I, I don't, you know, he, he, the one thing about Donald Trump that is he can be truthful and the times he is truthful is when he has, is at his most malevolent and mm -hmm. talking about his desires and wishes. And when you heard him say like, I want to be president in 2032 or something like right. that, he means it. Yeah. Right. He means it. I mean, he's a man. Remember he, he actually seriously, and you remember this, right? Mm -hmm. You guys were on Utah probably at the time um, uh, with the Lincoln project. Remember when he, he said that we should postpone the election yeah. because of COVID and yeah. he didn't, care about give a shit about covid no, no. clearly <laughs> and and he, he he you know that was the that, that's what that's what third world banana republics do right that's how that's how that's how you know and and he was questioning the election results all along before he even because he knew he was he knew he was going to be on the back end of that let's talk about a you know god forbid a second trump term yes because um you know we've tried to we've tried to explain to our friends and allies alike that um, there's no judicial proceeding in 2024 that's going to keep him off the ballot or if right. he's on the ballot, keep him from taking right. office if should he win, God forbid. Right. Um, you see, you know, there's a guy like Mike Davis, right, from this Article 3 project, who I used to know, George. Yeah, and no, he was, he, was, day, he was well he was, respected. He was, he was a, a normal smart, guy. And he's a very smart guy. Yeah. And and he was well respected. He used to be on, he was a Senate Judiciary Committee right. staffer he forever. Was I never guy, met yeah. him personally. But he, he's like so many of the people we know. He's gone completely off the deep end. Right. And so now he's talking about mass he's full, deportations. Right. He, no, full, full, full uh, Goebbels. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. And and so you're reading, you know, and it, it's amazing that you see some of these stories, a lot of them in the New York Times, where clearly the Davises of the world, the Stephen Millers of right. the world are sitting for interviews. These aren't scoops. Right. <laughs> right? No. They're sitting there telling Maggie and, and Swan and everybody else, right. like, here's what we want to do. And there's there's. There's always some legal expert who says, well, you know, in you know, in his term, this this court did this and this court did that. And I'm always thinking like the 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 sweet naivete, but the dangerous naivete yeah. to think that they care about any of that stuff. Right. They don't. They absolutely right. don't. It's all about power. It's all about manipulating the system to accrete more power and the law be damned. Right. And the law is just an obstacle to be manipulated. And if we have the right people in the right places, we can do it. And we're not going to tolerate anybody who has any scruples about um, morals or, yeah. or law or ethics or anything like that. And that, that's, what's, that's what we're going to see in the second Trump administration. All of the guardrails, which fell, fell by the wayside right. pretty much by the end of his term, aren't going to be there to begin with. I mean, you're right. not going to have, I mean, you know, there are these stories that have come out um, in these books, post-Trump administration books about how both General Kelly and I think one other chief of, mm. the chief of, uh, what was the acting chief of staff? Um, Mulvaney. Mulvaney. They both brought in books and materials about that people had written, that psychiatrists had written about Trump <laughs> right. to, to explain to people what they were dealing with. Yeah. You know, books that basically, this book, and particularly the book, that, the, the, the compendium of essays that were put together by a Yale professor named Bandy Lee mm -hmm. about how, you know, this man was unfit and dangerous. Right. Um, and they know that. And they know that. And these people, they don't care. Right. They don't care. 
And, and the re- I mean, real uh, one of the big challenges I think that has to occur um, that we have to meet is we need to get some of these people who know better now and who are willing to say so um, publicly, if not in the right, not in, in the right. biggest forms, but to get them to have you guys, for example, uh, I would love to see you guys get General Kelly on, you know, do a, cl- a, a video about telling, telling him about what he thought, what he yeah. really thinks about Trump and ma- making it go viral, putting it on TikTok, because that's the only way you're going to reach people. Yeah. So, um, um yeah, TikTok is, uh, it's something else. No, uh, I know it's, it, it needs to be, it, it, people have been overlooking its political utility, right. except, for, except for the bad people, the bad people right. figured it out. No, and the bad people always figure it out first, Correct. right? Because, yeah. the, because, and you know, that's the other part right. is, um, thinking about a second Trump term, you, f- I feel like George and I'd be interested to see, to hear what you're hearing, what you're feeling, what you're seeing is there still seems to be. I don't know if it's willful blindness or blindness born of fear or denial that like this can't happen. Right. Again. I, I think it's a, there are a lot of different things going on. I think there part of it is this like, oh, this can't happen here, which yeah. was, you know, in 2018, I was thinking, you know, the, the da- he is dangerous, but it's a corrosive long term effect. It's a much it, it's a much slower effect mm. than I thought it was. Um you know, but we had January 6th, right. and, which which shows that it the danger is clear and present. And I think there's just a disbelief that that that, you know, that January 6th really happened. That it was that serious. I think people just don't want to focus on the fact that we could become a third world country, in effect, yeah. um, in governance. And, and, and that, that some of the things that have happened in foreign lands could actually happen here. And in fact, ha- have happened here, yeah. but for um, <laughs> the intervention of the courts and but for um, an electorate that did the right thing in the end. Um, so the, but the other things, other things that are going on are he has been January 6th benefited him in the following way. They took him off Twitter Mm -hmm. and his leaving the white house got him off the radar screens of a lot of people. They talk off Twitter and Facebook and, 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 and he got a lot less media coverage after because he's not president anymore, but right. but also because he he was shut down, um, they've forgotten, right? What what drove them to the polls in two thousand, and they need to be reminded, and they need to be told that it's going to be much worse. And I don't think it's going to be, you know, it, it's like what what we used to talk about in twenty twenty with the Lincoln Project. Mm-hmm. It's like you're not going to move the very hardcore pro trumpists right right you, 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 you what you can do is you can pick off the you know people at the top who right. are kind of back and forth on on him and don't like joe biden don't like democrats and I, and I don't particularly like them either but you know but 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 you have to you know you have to scare them and, right and get, make them understand that this guy's just bad yeah um that 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 has to be done again right um but I do think, and I and I think the other thing that has to be done is that one of the things that Joe Biden has going for him, even though his poll numbers suck, is that um, people will crawl on broken glass to vote against Trump. Yeah, and they won't crawl on broken glass to vote in favor of Trump. Right, and that in the end is, you know, I think that in the end is 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 going to save the republic, assuming nothing bad happens. Um, right to Joe Biden, or assuming that you know our, uh, a third party candidate doesn't right. muck things up. Um, so that's I, I think he has benefited from the lower profile, and that's about to end. And so let me ask this: so uh, um, Rick and Stuart and I were up in Connecticut or upstate, not New York, um, a couple of months ago, and I was talking to a former assistant U.S. attorney. This was right. a, a guy who'd been an AUSA as a very young lawyer but right. he had sat in new york city um at, at a couple of mob trials so he in the southern district he was yeah. there, yeah. and um and he described seeing a mob boss sitting there at the at the table yeah. as one of his button men soldiers capos whatever after another came up and said yeah that's the guy that yeah. told me to do it that's the guy that told yeah. me to do it and he said i think trump's gonna melt down yeah when he's i, sitting I there. do too and i think that is also a key and i'm you know, uh, God, uh, God willing, if I can get the free time this week and next, I'm writing something okay. about that um, to be published at a, hopefully at a prominent place. Good. And 
I want to go back to what I wrote for the Atlantic four years ago, right? which was, you know, Trump is a narcissistic sociopath. And I'm not saying that so that we can diagnose him and treat him, but I think the treatment for the country needs to take that into account. Right. And what, you know, he is under a lot of pressure. He is showing the strains. Uh, I, he is what psychiatrists say called decompensating. Sure. Um, he, he's losing his defense back. You could see it in his face when he sits there at the trial in, in New York. You could see it in his unhinged truth social posts, which are worse than ever. Right. And which you know, goes back to the and, idea and, and that you really clips, can't the control. Are, the clips are just that. I mean, these clips that people need to see. And I'm glad to see that the Biden campaign is actually starting to do make use of them. We did um, last week. Yeah. And he, everybody and he attacked should, us yeah, again. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, and. We need to go after his ego. Yeah. Okay. Again, this is, uh, and the last part I'm going to write is basically the audience of one strategy needs, I mean, it's great that the Lincoln Project is doing it, but we need everybody to do it. Well, and, it, and, and, and it's, and it's not expensive. I mean, it was the, I mean, you remember how this, I mean, you weren't there, but the, the, how, how it all came about. It was like, it was, it was before we formed the Lincoln Project, I got, had lunch with Molly Jong Fast. Mm -hmm. And Rick Wilson mm -hmm. and I, I, I had remembered from the 2016 campaign, Brad Parscale coming in to talk to my wife, my then wife, and saying he f up because he had taken out he had he had run ads. His people had run ads, and he wasn't he didn't know anything about politics. He right. was saying I don't know anything about politics. I don't know anything about politics. Right. Somehow he was in charge of all the media, and he was spending money on cable networks in the District of Columbia in order to reach people out in Fairfax County, which is insane. It doesn't right. work that it way. It doesn't work that way. And, and, and it's like, I realized at that point, oh yeah, you could just basically buy you know, local, local slots. And I told, and I told, and, yeah. uh, uh, I told Rick, I said, hey, just run ads to drive him nuts. Find out what the cable provider is for, for the White House or for Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. And, and, and when you guys did it, it was it's, unbelievable. It, well, so I will, I will say this. Everybody go to the home front sub stack. I literally wrote a piece on this last week that said, if you want to beat Trump, attack okay, him. I'm going to print that out as soon then as I get home. Then attack you're gonna, him. You're going to get a big plug in the thing I'm writing. And attack him some more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I and even laid it out. That's absolutely right. I mean, and, and here's the thing about it is it doesn't cost a lot of no! money. No. I mean, you know, you need, it's great when you have some a geniuses like, like Rick doing it. Yeah, but, but, but Rick but, but, makes but, it even cheaper because he, he, writes, he, just, he, he just, he just, he just pops out of his no, brain. He, I mean, I think Rick. he wrote the script. We called it feeble yeah. and it was all of this. Oh, it was great. And, it was great. And, and Trump went crazy right. and he accused us of using AI to make this stuff happen. And I think this is a key piece of it about the ego, George. And you've seen this up close yeah. too, is that. He is so transparent. Yeah. He tells you what he's afraid of. Of course he does. And, and, and he, do, he, do, he tells you what he's afraid of. You can see what he gets mad about. Right. And he accuses everyone else of having the characteristics that he denies that he has. Right. Of being stupid, being crazy. Being well, now you see they're saying that Joe Biden's really the anti-democratic candidate. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 it, it, it's complete. And that so to, <laughs> to go back to the audience of one. Right. Um, I, I think the, the amount that, that what you need to do, what people need to do is spend money on that. It doesn't take that much because you don't have to run these ads coast to coast no. or even, co you know, uh, in every county in a no, swing you state. run in palm beach you county. run in palm beach you run it you run it in in in, in at bedminster right okay it's it's just like you know west Jersey. there's nobody lives in west jersey except a bunch of horses basically so, and, 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 and 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 i think you know what else we do is is we run it in in wet in palm right. beach because he's sitting in the bridal suite by himself watching right. tv he's got all he's got the some multiple channels yeah. on you know and and basically he can't help himself but respond right. in an unhinged manner and the more you poke at him and that combined with the legal pressure you will get more viral clips which you can then use to poke him again right. and 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 w the object is going to be to show the country that this guy is f nuts right um using his own face right using so his own words and and the, the i mean it really is a way of leveraging money um, you know, and, and, and the, and the stuff that you put on, if, if right. it's good, like the stuff that Rick does, 
it will go viral by yeah. itself. I, you post it on TikTok. You post it on anyone. People will send it. Yeah. And 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 here's the here's and the, the matter they are the more they yeah, send. Yeah. And it. here's the effect on the <laughs> on, on on the electorate. In my view, is you get that five percent we used to talk about mm-hmm. that Bannon. Yeah. That Bannon said that you know we have to keep that five percent. Right. We think it's even larger. We think it's even. Lo- 10, it's got to be larger now. Yeah. Right. And and then you get those eighty million, ninety million people who want to who would crawl on broken glass to see this man. Right. You know. Uh, done once mm-hmm. and for all. And then there's another effect, and I, I, I'd be interested in your thoughts on mm-hmm. this since you are at the actual political consultant. I think it would depress the core Trump vote. And I think there's evidence of that in, there was a report that got leaked um, written by Club for Club for Growth. Right. Club for Growth had did some Mess, ads where they, they 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 cut some ads attacking Trump and they showed them to yeah. pro Trump voters, and it didn't change their minds about who they would support in the primary. But they did find that it dampened their enthusiasm. Sure, and again, that's the reverse of the broken glass phenomenon. These people might stay home, and if you can if you can just make them just sort of exhaust them, the way that Trump exhausts people, right. And that's the problem. I mean, Trump just he, he, dealing with a narcissist, and, and I, I know for a fact that you you've dealt with one, sure. um, and I've dealt with some, and um, <laughs> they're exhausting. If you know, you know. Yeah. If you've ever dealt with a narcissist, and and, and this and Trump is like way beyond the ordinary sure. street right. narcissist you learn on the street. They are f-ing exhausting. Yeah. Even to the people who love them. Right. And so. And they're worse to those people. And yes, absolutely. And, and that is why you can depress the turnout. They, they will say, they'll, they'll still say they're a diehard Trump supporter, but, you know, it's raining. Ugh, right. I'm tired. I'm so tired of politics. And these are, and that's the thing too about Trump is the, that the way Trump won or, you know, won the electoral college and won the popular vote in 2016 was he drew people People, politically disaffected people who weren't real, who yeah. weren't hardcore voters. Right. He drew them in. Right. And these are, but these are the marginal voters. Yeah. The lost tribes of Northern Michigan. Right. right. They yeah. can, they'll go back. They'll just, they'll stay home. You know, because they, the, remember, they don't right. like anybody anyway. They don't like anybody anyway. And, and hey, maybe, maybe they'll just say, well, let's, talk, let's go for the new face. We'll vote for uh, uh, RFK Jr. Uh, well, which and, I'm for and, that. And, <laughs> and, and, and what you're talking about is, is really smart for a couple of reasons. One yeah. is because, um, in authoritarian movements, which I believe Trump is at the Correct. head of, he, no, he, he is instinctively authoritarian. Um, the once the inv- invincibility is pierced, yes, right? that's exactly and right. The inevitability you, and inevitability is pierced, and that's why this right. the, all of this audience of one stuff. You know, whatever you are attacking him on has to be, or is best if it's mocking. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, hey Rick. Where are you, Rick? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And he, he can't help himself. He, no. It drives him into a rage and he can't yeah. turn it off. I mean, you know, he hate watch. He still I, he, he still probably hate watches uh, Joe and Mika every morning. Right. You know. Well, and so but you also the thing is, is so there was a survey out as we're recording this, George, from Michigan. Yeah. It had Trump at 50, Biden at 40. Um, Take all the, you know, all the preamble yeah. about polls a year out and everything else. Yeah. Like. The reason why I have a hard time believing that is I don't think Trump gets to 50 unless he was even if he was running against yeah, nobody. I agree. Right. Um, and so, because I think he's 46, 47 right. tops. But now you see and this is the thing is that his, you know, his base is homogeneous, but it's also brittle, which is to your point. You have all these evangelicals, a guy like Bob Vanderplatz out right. in Iowa, who's a nut in his own right. Don't no, get me wrong. But he's doing he's I, I like where he's going right, right now. Right, which is he's doing, he's helping do our work for us, which right. is he re, he knows this guy's not, I mean. Yeah, you got to move on to the next thing. Right. And so you, you start to, and again, this is the thing. Donors know that too. This the is the donors. game of small numbers, right. right? This isn't, we have to make sure that a million evangelicals stay home. We need to make sure that 10,000 evangelicals stay right. home, right? And if you can do that, just shaving that little bit yep. off, yep. he can't win. Right. And and the other thing that's going on, I mean, with the, the talk about the polls is that uh, people have to remember I'm glad they're alarmed at the polls because right. I think that, that the fact that we are even talking about the possibility of him getting the nomination and getting 35, 40, 45 percent of the vote, that it's even possible and conceivable right. that this man who is who who has been indicted four times and likely will be a convicted felon who won't be able to vote 
by the time of the next election right. um, is just, you know, the fact that there's even a five or 10 or 20 percent chance of him prevailing is is like the five or 10 percent chance of, you know, drinking polonium tea. Right. And and so it's 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 bad. Yeah. And I'm glad people are getting alarmed. But the fact of the matter is with these polls, it's like, OK, what do you expect? Because wh what happens is at this point in a presidential cycle, and again, you're the political song, I'm mm -hmm. just a lawyer, um, you know, people are, every time you ask, you, you, you conduct one of these horse race polls, it's a, it's, it's a referendum on the incumbent. So mm -hmm. if they have some beef about the incumbent, um, or they don't, you know, they're not excited by the incumbent, they'll, they'll check for the alternative. Yeah. And, but, but right now, the race is about Biden. Next year, if everybody does their job, it's going to be about Donald Trump. Well, and, and Trump he can't help and Trump himself. can't help himself right. because he wants it to be about him. Yeah, and that you know, and that's that's what happened in twenty in 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 twenty twelve. Um, Obama made the, made the race about Romney by running all those ads in Ohio and wherever mm -hmm. in, in in August, right? You know, before the convention, where people saying, "Oh, you're running this too early." No, no, he made the race about Romney in twenty sixteen. Um, my ex-wife made it about Hillary, right? And and that you know that's why she lost. And then in 2020, with Trump, you know, on everybody's TV screens, exhausting everybody, the race was about Trump, and he lost. So but if it by a narrow margin where it mattered, right? That's right. It was still very well, close. thanks to the electoral college and whatnot. But right. but that's it, it. But that's the thing is the race is going to end up being about Donald Trump, who is going to dominate the news, um, by being a criminal right. and by 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 acting out and hopefully you know what what what, what if, if the democrats need to really learn something and they can learn it from the lincoln project is you go after him and trigger him yeah and i think everybody needs to spend money just going after him yeah and and that you know it, it's just much that's actually much more efficient having him act out and and respond to the to right. to, to these to these viral ads mocking him that he only that he, only he sees yeah then that means the mainstream media Has covers what he says and then covers what triggered it and then people share the videos online yeah and and people say wow this is really crazy and you can do all of this out of his own mouth yeah you can you do the don't difference even have to make great. it up he, you know the, the the republicans have been very good about creating smoke about not really very good, but they they try to create smoke about everything about Hunter Biden. It's like okay, yeah. fine, you know, I'll, I'll impeach Hunter Biden, go for it, right. um, <laughs> uh, you know, and 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 make false accusations, accusations without um, evidence. There's evidence against this guy. Yeah, he's the one who's been indicted. And you know, I, I was on a C-SPAN the other day, and some guy was attacking me. He's like, "You never say anything bad about Biden." It's like I'm not a particularly big fan of Biden's, but have you read this indictment? Right. Do you read? Do you read this? Read a newspaper. Read this indictment. People need to. It's not that complicated, and you can make. You know, you have to. He's a criminal nut job. Yeah. And that just has to be pounded and pounded and pounded, and you pound him with it, and then he screams about it. He does and the you work say, for There you. he is. Yeah. It's the Streisand yeah, effect, you know, right? And he can't like, help right. himself. It's like it's like you know, it's like every book that was ever written during you know about him. Yeah, he attacks the he attacks the you know he attacks the the author and attacks the book, and all of a sudden you know the sales go up on Amazon. Right. When 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 you when we ran that first um, audience of one at, morning America morning in America morning in America oh that was brilliant that was yeah. so good. You know, he's out there on the tarmac saying we're all losers. Yeah. And we you know, went and from, it was, we it went was, from raising four hundred thousand yeah. dollars a month. We to raised two just, million yeah. dollars that, that day. day. Yes, I remember. And 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 it's just like, you know, that's the way to beat this guy. But it's that's the, with his head. With his head. But I want to say one more thing, more thing, and then I want to get to the Society for the Rule of Law. Yes. Um, is what you've said several times is something that we have been trying to say too, which is and you see it with his primary opponents and i put that in air quotes is they still don't understand except for christy christy gets it yeah christy gets it but, but you need more than one guy doing this right and 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 somebody other than the guy on the reputation repair tour yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but you know. um is you can't he's not a politician he's not a regular politician right he doesn't care about the things that regular politicians care about he doesn't act like that because he's not a regular human being right and that's why you have to stop acting like he is. Right. You have he to is stop not a acting like his he, campaign he, he, is. Right. He, he, he's, you know, I mean, it's like what I told, <laughs> I was, the C-SPAN thing was a lot of fun. I was like, I could, I could do that all day, taking the MAGA calls. I, yeah. I, I was fun. And I just, I said to this guy, he said, caller, 
he doesn't care about you. Right. He doesn't care about you one bit. He doesn't care about any of us. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is he has no, he is a sociopath, a psychopath. He has, he has, he cares about nobody but himself. In fact, in his world, he's the only one that really exists. Yeah. And so he's, he doesn't respond the way uh, a normal politician would because even these pol even an egomaniacal your typical egomaniacal politician who is narcissistic to some extent uh, in a significant way you have to be someone you have to be narcissistic to run as my dad says there's, yeah, they're, they're right. they're, right. if you put your name on a ballot but, you're different but these guys you know right. it, it, at some level though they all have consciences yeah right they all feel guilt when 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 they're when they're accused of doing something wrong they 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 you can see the guilt in their face i mean mm -hmm. remember when when bill clinton bill clinton is fairly narcissistic guy. I mean, he's fairly, you know, he's full of himself and an and egomaniac, but he has, you know, on, on the other hand, he's got some empathy. But the thing is, remember when he, when they, when, when he was accused of, of messing with, with Monica, mm. you could see the guilt in his eyes. Mm. Okay. You, you don't ever see guilt in Donald Trump. Right. Okay. You don't ever see remorse. You don't ever see um, any sense that he feels that he could possibly have done something wrong because in his mind, the right is whatever he wants. Right. By the definition, wrong is if whatever he did anybody does to keep him from getting what he wants. Right. It's purely, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's it, feral. It, it's feral. It's evil. It's he, he, it is. He lacks basic humanity. Yeah. And we should remember all that because yeah. they're telling and that's what us. We have to explain it, and that's, that, that, and that's part of the problem. To go back to why people have problems comprehending it, yeah. is it's not you're not dealing with an ordinary human. You're right. dealing with somebody who is basically shorn of humanity. Right. No, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about the Society for the Rule of Society Law. Society of the Rule of Law. I, I you may remember we had I, I formed this organization. At, um, and announced it on the week of the Federal Society Convention in 2018 when mm. I had basically been off the reservation. I was a member of the board right. of, the, of, the, of the Federal Society. Which is time. now considered too squishy even for Too MAGA. squishy even for Trump, right. <laughs> and, and, and I formed this group. It was partly like it was a support group for, for, for the conservative lawyers in, in town who, who felt, you know, who felt, who were upset about sure. Trump and upset about nobody was speaking. People they knew who knew better weren't speaking out about Trump. Right. It was and you know and, and it had a therapeutic effect. Sure. So we'd get together and we'd have lunch and we'd write op-ed pieces and 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 some of us at the time I didn't but I would go and do TV interviews. And so it was called checks and balances. And what happened was well, we kind of let it drift after the 2020 election. We mm -hmm. thought you know things will get better. Um, and there's really no need for us to really be that active anymore. And then that turned out after because of the January 6th and the people, the people who who, who now uh, promote January 6th as, as a good thing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Trump is going to, you know, the fact that Trump never went away um, and, and the fact that you have all of these people who are basically every bit as anti-democratic and authoritarian as Trump now waiting in the wings to take over parts of the government, whether it yeah. be Congress or the bureaucracy. Um, you know, this is a long-term issue. Even yeah. when even when Trump is gone, it's going to be a long-term issue of restoring respect for the rule of law and for the democratic process. You fight in the demo, you fight in the in 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 at the voting booth and you fight in in in, in debate and in, in in legislatures, but at the end you accept the result. Right. And uh, and and you have and you, to be willing to you lose. have to be willing to lose and you have to be willing to compromise. That's and you the have way. to be understand. And I, I'm sorry to interrupt. You have to no, understand. And I've tried to say this a million times. Democracy does not mean that when you win, you get everything you, you want. It means the whole point. that you get to make right. your case. Right. You get to make your case and 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 you get something you, if you're smart and you and you're persuasive enough, you can get some of what you want. You're right. never going to the world is never going to be. And, you know, this is fundamentally a very conservative view. Right. Because we're conserving. Right. You know, we want to conserve the rule of law. We want to conserve the institutions that got us, you know, that they basically make this the best. Uh, the reason why we have an immigration problem is because people want to come to the United States right. still. Right. Uh, that may change, but we'll see. Uh, and we, we need may, them. You and I may end up in New Zealand next right. well, year, <laughs> 2025. But, 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 but look, but you know. we, not only that, like economically, yeah. which you believe that yeah. conservatives are always sort of more on the economic yeah. side is we need them. Absolutely. We need, we need everybody from, from the engineer to the person right. who's going to come and start a new life, mm -hmm. right? We need all of those people. Yeah, and, but the the point really is that um, democracy, 
Churchill put it. Remember mm-hmm. Churchill's line about democracy it is the worst form of government except for all the others right. that have been tried from time to time. And right. that's that's true. You have to look at democracy that way. It's messy. It's tough. You don't you you you, you get stupid answers sometimes. <laughs> um, right. But it's better than us people shooting each other. Yeah. It's better than people throwing their political enemies in jail. It's better than this than, than Russia, the Soviet Union, the uh, People's Republic of China, right. Hungary today, I know uh, Gaza. I mean, yeah, you know, Turkey, it's like you, uh, you it. look at all these places where people. What you, it requires civility. It requires accepting the rules. It requires respect and, and for the other side. It requires empathy, and all of these things. You know, all of these things are are things that we have to work on as a country going forward, or we're not going to have a country. And so that's sort of broadly what the rule of, the, to go back to the, the question, yeah. which is that the rule of law society we is is about. It's not really about the election. We're mm-hmm. not, you know, we're not, we're a C four, we're C three and a C four, but we're not. So we can't. We're not. We're not campaigning not for anybody. Right. But we we want to tell people what. We want to bring people, remind people of what the fundamental values are of this country and how they are under threat today. And we'll put the website in yep. the uh, show notes. Well, listen, I want to say thank you so much. Where can we find you? If you still dare to be on social media, where can we find yeah, you? Yeah, I am GT Conway 3 on threads. I'm transitioning to threads. <laughs> um, I still occasionally post on Twitter or people know where to find me. I have been making noises about starting a sub stack because I need to get back into to writing. Yep. Um, but I'm going to be writing a piece that's not good. It's going to be for a, a magazine. Yep. And, and, and I'm probably going to do some more writing. Um, and I've been kind of, because I'm trying to get this piece done about Trump, I'm trying to stay off TV this month because it's just a right. time suck. Right. But, you know, and preparing psychologically for next year, which is going to be, you know, or it's going to be a shit show. Uh, well, there's no question. As always, gang, you can find me on Twitter at Reed Galen on Threads and Instagram at Reed underscore Galen underscore LP, and on Substack at the Home Front. Yep. George Conway, and thanks I gotta for get joining that me. Article you wrote. Yeah. I will send it to you. Thank thanks you. for joining me. Thanks again to everyone for listening. Be sure to follow and subscribe to the Lincoln Project on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, Google, or however you listen. Don't forget to leave a five-star review. To connect with us, follow us on Twitter, at Project Lincoln, and for more information on our movement, to join our mailing list, subscribe to our newsletter, or make a contribution to our efforts, visit lincolnproject.us. If you want to message the podcast directly, please send an email to podcast at lincolnproject.us. And if you want to personally join the fight to save our nation's democracy, visit jointheunion.us. For The Lincoln Project, I'm Reed Galen. I'll see you on the next episode.